to the revolutionaries not yet born. I and all my comrades will falter, fail, fall with the task unfinished. But I call out to all the workers of the rose, to you, O revs of the morrow, take it onward, declare it, name it, work it, a permanent cradle-to-grave society of the sharing rose, with freedom to speak, dream, act, and create, a place where there is no poverty, no class structure, and everyone has equal access to the best medical care, where there is genuine protection of the environment, an organic food supply, and lots of personal freedom. That's it, O oh revs of the morrow. Work in extra dimensions. Think a hundred years ahead. Enjoy your revolution. Show enough mercy so that mercy shows the way. And never give up till war-hungry capital is gone and the fields of sharing prevail. I was a founder of the Youth International Party, one of the founders, the Yippies. And uh, I took part in the riot at the Democratic Convention of August 1968, where the police bashed in under the tutelage of Mayor Richard Daley, bashed into all these protesters, and we stood outside the Democratic Convention shouting, the whole world is watching, the whole world is watching. So I'm going to do a world premiere of a song from the Fugs album, uh, The Bell of Avenue A, which I recorded in 1969 about the Chicago riot. It's called Yodeling Yippie. I ride the way left wing airlines stirring up trouble at night secret signs and secret deeds I'm just a yodeling yippie with the Kai Yippee Yodelay Yodelay Lay Yodelay Well, I went to see Mayor Daly, drove into Chicago town. Mayor Daly, that porcomorph, he chopped down his yodeling friends. Ole, ole, ole. Well, I ride across the USA. Stirring up peace creeps at night. We'll ride high and we'll ride low. I'm just a yodeling yippie with the kind yippie lay. Chicago town 
mare daily that poor Comorph. He chopped down his yodeling friends. Oh, lady, oh, lady. I call it broom poem. Bomb, then clean up. Strafe, then broom up. Laser, then swab up. Drone, then brush up. Hack, then pick up. The same back to Pork Chop Hill in Korea. And then all the way back to 1000 BC, Troy Layer 7A, and beyond. Yeah. Um, this is a translation of uh, one of Sappho's two extant poems. Thanks to the depredations of the Christians and the Muslims, hardly any of Sappho poems survived. Um, and this is one of them. I, I've uh, written a melody for it, and I'll do it in the original Greek after I read uh, my translation. And it's uh, from uh, Longinus's book, On the Sublime. It was one good thing about scholars uh, in ancient Greece, they preserved things like Sappho. Equal to the gods is the man who sits in front of you leaning closely and hears you sweetly speaking. And the lust licking laughter of your mouth, oh, it makes my heart beat and flutters. When I look at you, Brochea, not a part of my voice comes out, but my tongue breaks, and right away a delicate fire runs just beneath my skin. I see a dizzy nothing, my ears ring with noise, and the sweat runs down upon me, and a trembling that I cannot stop seizes me, limb and loin. Oh, I am greener than grass, and death seems so near. Fine a tie, moi, cana si sas the oisin. Come and gloss away uh, 
gay lip tone Doughty cachro poor who but dead drew mocking Oh, but he do the norim a piron. Basi da kwe. Ademidros kachetai dromas dromas de. Doughty cachro poor who put dead drumakin. Oh, but as he do the norim a pee wrong. Basi da kwe. The century first poem that William Blake ever wrote. He was about 11 years old or possibly 13 years old. It's on his first manuscript and it's a beautiful four quatrain po love poem uh, that stood the test of time and it was on the first Fugs record from 1965. How Sweet I Roam from Field to Field by William Blake. How sweet I roam from field to field and taste it all. The summer's pride till I, the prince of love, beheld who in the sunny beams did glide. He showed me lilies for my hair and blushing roses for my brow. He led me through his garden's fair where all his golden pleasures grow with sweet may dews my wings were wet and phoebus fired my vocal rage he caught me in his silken net and shut me in his golden cage. He loves to sit and hear me sing, then laughing sports and plays with me. Then stretches out my golden wing and mocks my loss of liberty. Then stretches out my golden wing and mocks my loss <coughs> of liberty.
No more acid punch. <laughs> Coffee. Um, this is from our second album. This is inspired by a wonderful poem by my mentor, Charles Olson, Maximus from Dogtown One. We drink or break open our veins solely to know. And I wrote this, uh, we were writing songs for our second album and I was on the Second Avenue bus and this song flowed into my mind. We drink or break open our veins solely to know, solely to know, solely to know. Hunger drives me onward to feel all of the skin, all of the skin, all of the skin. The thrill of the knowing blasts me out of my brain. I want to know, oh, I want to know. Into our eyes, hundreds of flashes cause us to feel the life in the sky solely to know, solely to know. I want to know, I want to know, please let me know, I have to know. Solely to know, solely to know. Ah, into our eyes, hundreds of flashes cause us to feel the life in the sky. I want to know, I want to know. Gregory Corso. One of the first poetry readings I went to in New York City as a young uh, Greek student at NYU was at the Living Theater in 1958, I think it was, where Allen Ginsberg read, or was 59. He'd just written a Kaddish. So he read part of Kaddish. And Gregory Corso, uh, yelled from the audience and made comments. And, and I thought, why is this guy, I really revered Allen Ginsberg at that time, you know, and, and why was this guy allowed to interrupt? I didn't know Gregory Corso, I became a good friend later. But yeah, why was this guy interrupting my hero, reading his new poem about his mother, Kaddish? And then flash, flash forward 30 years, and I remember Alan, uh, Gregory Corso heckling me so I realized it was an honor to have Greg, he didn't just heckle anybody. He, he, so uh, Gregory Corso made a remark at the 1976 St. Mark's New Year's poetry reading. He said, Gregory Corso, about his generation, the beat generation, we created change without a drop of blood. So I've, I'll read some of my ode to the beat generation. It wasn't a perfect group of guys, mainly, but some girls too, some women too, some wonderful women, but a lot of uh, testosterone maddened young men in it. Hail to the beat generation in the time mist. Hail to the generation that rocked across the ocean with a mighty boat of books that shook all cities. Thank God for cameras, O oh Beat Generation, for they have captured your wild dance forever. Thank God for mimeograph machines and inexpensive presses, for they have inked your final type. Thank God for the angels in your canvases, O oh Generation. 
And may the candles in the, your Chianti bottles light up heaven, O oh beats, and no one ever publish hell again. Thank God for your beautiful loss, O oh beat generation. Thank God for the concept of, quote, gone, unquote. They can't extinguish gone, no matter how hard they try. Sacred gone, eternal gone, fission gone. They can't explain the flame, they can't extinguish the flames in your sandals, O oh beat generation. And the Egyptian cold that outlines your wanton eyes. They can't extinguish the bongo drums at midnight on the Staten Island Ferry in the waters of gone. Or the crevices and wild appendages insatiate from Moscow to Moravia to Memphis. The strands of time are like a baklava, O oh beat generation. So many layers and laughs and lines and loans. Creeley typing the stencils for the mimeographed version of Hal on Kenneth Rexroth's typewriter. Lawrence Ferlinghetti's left-wing poems of people tired of repairing Ezekiel's wheel for a shot of whiskey. De Prima typing revolution across the dead eyes of tyrants. The dueling, econ the dueling economies of Burroughs and Ginsburg. The broccoli swords of Corso and Gary Snyder. The art of the road and the art of the word is the art of the rose. We hear you, O beat generation, down by the sunny marsh singing for 60 years like the frogs of Aristophanes. Ecstasy fondue, sax clover, tire sandal soup. And I've written a song for Gregory Corso's remarkable saying at the St. Mark's New Year's party. We created change without a drop of blood. Our generation, our generation, we shall make enormous change without a drop of blood. No one can stop us. No one can hold us back, Kennedy or Khrushchev. We shall change the world. 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 Without a drop of blood No more slavery No more Ku Klux Klan No more atomic bomb And no more poverty Without a drop of blood Without a drop of blood, we shall change the world. Without a drop of blood. I'd like to say it's been a great honor to be in the wonderful city of Basel. I was able to walk around a couple of days and see it, some of its magnificent vistas and views and river, just a marvelous place. And thank Christian for making it possible for me to come all the way from my little hometown of Woodstock, New York. I, I rarely travel these days, but I, it sounded like an interesting conference. <laughs> So I'll close my portion and uh, congratulations to Anne for a fast-spoken, wonderful uh, uh, staccato recitative 
chant world spray about those wonderful years. So this is a, a song from the Fug second album. It's by the remarkable Thule Kupferberg, my co-founder of the Fugs, and it's uh, a marvelous, uh, sad love song. Morning, morning. Morning, morning, feel so lonesome in the morning, morning, ooh, morning, morning brings me Sunshine, ooh, sunshine. Sunshine laughs upon my face in the glory of the growing. Puts me in my rotting place. Evening, evening, feel so lonesome in the evening, evening, ooh, evening, evening brings me Moonshine, moonshine, moonshine drugs the hills with grace, and the secret of the shining seeks to break my simple face. Nighttime. Ooh, night time kills the blood upon my cheek. Night time, ooh, night time does not bring me to relief. Starshine, ooh, starshine, feel so loving in the starshine, 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 darling kiss me as I
you asked for it, so. <laughs> Once by the Neckar, I stood next to Holderlin's tower. There like a Greek myth or a universal truth and fed the swans. I wanted to pitch a tent by the river and practice my recitations by the cistern of the muses. The banker Gontar in 1798 caught Holderlin and his wife Suzette bawling. So Holderlin fled Frankfurt and began to flip out, though he completed his translations of Soph Sophocles and nine odes of Pindar. At the same time, he was trapped in a dreadful cycle, alternate depression and nervous irritability. Then to Tübingen, the summer of 1807, he moved, harmlessly crazy. He lived in the tower for 36 years till he passed on 1841. Friedrich, Friedrich, stay in your tower. The good folk of Tübingen still mention your sadness. They point to your house as if you were still there, even though it's been a century more since your lungs pulled in air. Gontar may have learned he was bawling his wife, may have caught them kissing, smoky with strife. There were angry words, and the poet was fired, and while life wended onward, hopeless and mired. Holderlin, Holderlin, kiss your love in quickness, now and then, quick meetings, as if Eros were a sickness. Did they fuck? Nothing in ink has survived. It doesn't matter much now, just sorrow contrived. More and more crazy, in loveless ups and downs, looking for tutoring jobs in poetless towns, till he learns Suzette had died from measles one summer, and all of the future was the moan of a bummer. He wended even more crazy after he lost his Suzette. He wandered back to Tübingen with naught but regret. Then a well-to-do cabinet maker, then a well-to-do cabinet maker named Ernst Zimmer, who was reading Hölderlin's novel Hyperion, and gave him a glimmer, invited him to dwell in that tall yellow tower, food, solace, and comradeship for poetry's flower. Sometimes he was out, sometimes he was in. Sometimes the universe has a clown face grin, writhing in sadness, dispersed with gladness, till for when a person truly knows, they call it madness. Look at the world, so caustic and cruel. Poet against poet, drool for a duel. It's tempting to hide away from such fuel. A few lines when calm enough, and the sea's not so rough. Sometimes I pray for an endless hour, living in the upper room of Holderlin's tower. I'd stroll from the yellow in my snow 
in my snow-time scarf with crumbs for the swans from the crazy man's wharf. Thank you again. <laughs>